saying uh, good morning or good evening to everybody, uh, wherever you are. Uh, just for accessibility, I'll do a self-description. So I'm a white woman with long hair. I'm speaking out of my living room at home. Um, thanks so much to everybody for joining. Uh, as Matthew said, uh, today I'm going to be talking about productionizing machine learning pipelines with a couple of great open source tools, uh, Airflow, obviously, and also Kdro and Great Expectations. Uh, so to start with just a bit of an introduction, um, as he said, I'm Kenton Danis. Uh, I'm a field engineer at Astronomer. Uh, I live in Seattle, so I'm joining from the evening, my time. Uh, my background is in data engineering consulting and helping companies adopt Airflow. Uh, I've done this for many different use cases in my consulting life and then also at Astronomer um, and love seeing just the different ways that everybody uses Airflow. It's such a great tool for so many different things. Uh, so the one use case that I'll focus on today um, is again productionizing machine learning jobs. So as many people here probably are familiar with, um, making a machine learning model can be really fun. Uh, you can work in a Jupyter notebook, you can grab some data, and play around with some Python, Python packages, uh, get something working often without too much hassle or maybe at least with a little bit of magic. But taking that model and putting it into production adds another layer or rather multiple layers of complication. Um, how do you orchestrate that model? How do you train that model on a schedule, publish results, uh, keep track of versioning automatically? What do you do if something goes wrong? Um, I'll dive in shortly to how you can implement these things. But for now, uh, this slide is just to say why you would want to do any of that. Uh, it probably seems pretty obvious, but Namely, it allows you to actually rely on your results in production systems and frees up your time to work on other things. So again, developing models in a notebook is really fun, but it won't be all that useful unless you can actually do something with the results. Uh, and that most likely requires automation and orchestration. So I certainly wouldn't want my job to be running something manually every day, week, et cetera. Um, and probably you don't either. So and in addition to the aspect of productionizing the model, uh, another key piece is being confident that your models are actually good. Um, so you've probably all heard the saying, all models are wrong, some are useful. Well, if you're using a model in production, you definitely want to ensure that yours is one of the useful ones. Right? Uh, one way of helping get to that end result is to build data validation checks into your machine learning pipeline that are designed to catch any erroneous data and intervene before something bad happens. So we all know the crap in, crap out saying, um, and data validation checks are a great way of ensuring that you stay in the top scenario here, where you're putting good stuff in, you're getting good stuff out. So I hope I've covered kind of why you would want to productionize a machine learning model in general. And I'm focusing in this presentation on using open source tools to do so. Um, there are obviously many ways that you could implement this type of use case, but using an open source tool gives you the benefit of great communities, project feedback, um, low or even no cost. Uh, a lot of the most commonly used tools in the data ecosystem are open source, obviously Airflow being at the center of that. Um, you've seen folks have a lot of success with them. And so again, that's what I'm gonna focus on today. Uh, I'll dive into the particular stack that I'm gonna use for this example. So I will go through actual code and all of that shortly, but just wanna give an overview for those that may not be familiar with these particular tools that I'm going to talk about. Um, so I'll start with Kdro, which is an open source Python based tool for kind of pipeline defying your machine learning models. Um, this is going to provide the automation and reusability aspects of productionizing your models. So Kidra is developed by Quantum Black. They have a really great team over there. Uh, I highly recommend checking out some of their docs and reading more, kind of working through the tutorials to get used to the code. Um, but at a high level, Kdro allows you to use software engineering best practices on your machine learning code. So again, for those that aren't familiar, I'll kind of talk through some of the main concepts here, but also note that Kdro has a ton of functionality and nuance that I won't get a chance to touch on. So again, uh, I would point you to the docs linked uh, before uh, to learn more. But the first concept uh, within Kdro is a node. So it's a basic unit of work defined as a 
a wrapper around a Python function that is going to name the inputs and outputs of that function. So you can think of them as things like splitting your data or training your model. Um, then you have a pipeline, which is going to organize how those nodes organize those nodes and um, define an execution order and any dependencies. So you may notice that these concepts sound a lot like basic airflow concepts. Uh, there are a lot of similarities, and we will come back to that. Um, but next, we have a data catalog, uh, which is going to define all of the data sources that a project can use. So this particular functionality is going to help with that versioning aspect. Uh, and finally, you have a runner. So if you're using Kdra by itself, this would be the object that actually runs your pipeline. I'm not going to use that in this case because we're going to be using Airflow for that functionality, but just so you know that it exists. Uh, and when you combine all of this into a Kdra project, you may have a file structure that looks something like this example from the Kdra docs. And I point this out, namely, um, to say that all of the code that I'm going to go through is available in a public GitHub repo. Um, the link will be on my slide. So you may notice that in addition to all of your Airflow stuff going on, you'll see something very, uh, very similar to this file structure here. So the next part of the stack is great expectations. So this is going to provide the data quality piece of the equation, the data validation. Um, Great Expectations is another open source Python framework. Again, it's for data validations, and it provides an easy way of integrating data quality checks into your data pipelines. Uh, it's made even easier when working with Airflow because there is a Great Expectations provider. Um, so that's super cool, um, something great that the community has contributed back um, from the Great Expectations team, and they will talk about that more as we go through. And again, on this one, I won't go into too much depth about how Great Expectations works here. Um, I will say for anybody particularly interested in this piece that Sam Bell gave a great talk yesterday that talked about it more in depth. So I um, would encourage you to listen to the recording of her talk uh, if you haven't already for kind of more details. But in short, for this example, um, the way expectations work are that you create an assertion that defines how your data should look. Um, it's really intuitive. It translates pretty directly into like plain English. So in this particular example, um, you can see I'm saying that this column should have values between one and six. Uh, and then Great Expectations takes care of all the work behind the scenes to compare your data to this expectation and give a passing or failing result. And finally, in our stack uh, for this example, of course, we have Airflow to tie it all together. So I'll assume no need to talk about why Airflow is a great open source tool uh, for this particular crowd. Um, so with that, I'll go ahead and jump right into talking about an example implementation. Um, so let's assume that I've been working with Kdro and I have a machine learning pipeline built. So again, I'm not focusing this talk on using um, how to use Kdro kind of from the ground up. Um, but again, there are great docs and tutorials out there on how to get started. Um, for this example, I used the tutorial model for predicting species type with the iris data set. So you may be familiar with um, the iris data set if you've worked with machine learning tools before. So again, just a super simple pipeline for an example. Um, and then what a Kdro project ends up looking like is again, you have um, different nodes that are going to do different pieces. Um, each one of those is powered by Python functions. So you have a lot of Python code under the hood. Um, in this particular case, it's doing um, things like splitting the data, again, training, testing, making a prediction, and then reporting. Um, and all that's tied together into a pipeline. So that's where you're starting at in this example, is you have your Kdro pipeline and now the question is, again, how do I orchestrate this? Like, what am I going to do to automate the running of this model? Um, in other words, how do I turn that Kdro project into an Airflow DAG? So fortunately, uh, Quantum Black has created this great Kdro Airflow package that can be used to do this for you automatically. So once you have your Kdro project, you can simply install the Kdro Airflow package. It's just a Python package. Uh, and then you can run this Kdro Airflow create command, and that's going to generate your DAG code for you. So the results of this command are that every node, uh, again, remember that Kdro concept in your Kdro project, uh, is going to become an Airflow task. 
and your Kdra pipeline becomes your DAG with all of the required dependencies. So in order to implement this in the context of Airflow, um, one of the things that that command does is generates a Kdro operator um, with obviously the boilerplate Kdro operator code um, that you can see here on the left. So it's pretty straightforward. It's going to create a Kdro session and then has functionality to execute each node uh, that you have defined. Uh, from there, each of your nodes is going to be converted to a task. Uh, so that's what you see in the snippet here on the right. Uh, I'm just showing two of them. Um, so I'll show a view of the whole DAG in a second, but just to get a sense, the top cater operator there is uh, splitting my data. So again, that's giving me my uh, test and train splits. Uh, so there's an operator for that. Um, and then my training node also has an operator. So that's the one that's going to actually run the training of the model. Uh, you can see that each one is given all of the information about the nodes and the pipeline in your Kdro package. Um, so uh, you just pass in all of that metadata and then the operator is going to take care of actually executing uh, those steps for you based on the code that you've defined within your Kdro project on the back end. Um, and again, that Kdro Airflow create command does all of this for you. So obviously what you end up with is just a Python file. You can update it as needed, but not too much work required on your part to get to this point. Um, so taking a look at this in the Airflow UI, uh, you can see that I'm already off and running in terms of productionizing this model. Um, I now have a DAG that goes through the different steps in my machine learning pipeline, and I can schedule and monitor this automatically using Airflow. Um, you can also imagine that I can add any tasks to the end of this to publish these results or do whatever you're going to do with the output of this model. So after that reporting task, you can kind of add whatever you need. So now what about the data validation piece? Um, let's say that this use case is some, um, in this use case, if something is kind of wacky with my training data, um, then I really don't want the pipeline to move on to the reporting step. Or if something's wrong with my raw data, I don't even want to go through this at all. Maybe this uses a lot of resources to train this model, and I don't want to waste those resources on bad data. Um, so that's where Grid Expectations comes in. I mentioned before that Grid Expectations has an Airflow provider. Um, taking a screenshot here of the documentation on the Astronomer Registry for this provider. Um, this is definitely a great place to go to get started to learn more about the provider and all of the functionality that it brings and see some example DAGs, uh, things like that. So in general, the provider is going to make it super easy to integrate your great expectations checks into your DAG. Um, so to get started, I just need to install the great expectations provider package. So this is assuming that you're running Airflow 2.0. Um, if you're not already running Airflow 2.0, um, Hexel gave a talk uh, on how to upgrade, so I'll refer you to that one. Um, but in this particular case, if you're running with 2.0, uh, you can just install the provider package in your Airflow environment. In this particular case, I've added it to a requirements.txt file. That's how we do it in the context of an astronomer project. But any way you want to get that Python package into, um, uh, into your Airflow environment uh, is totally fine. Oops. Uh, so from there, I go ahead and define my expectations suite. So I won't go into this uh, again in too much detail for this talk. It could easily be multiple talks unto itself. But the basic concept is that I have JSON files that are going to store all of my expectations for a particular data set. So in this example here, uh, for this expectation for my raw data, I'm saying that I expect the row count to be between 1 and 500 and the species column to be fully populate, populated, so no nulls. Um, with great expectations, uh, I can define any number of expectations for that data set. So I have two in this case, could be 50, it could be 100, kind of whatever you need. Um, you can also define as many different expectation suites as you need to cover data at different points in the pipeline. So you'll see I do that in this example where I'm saying I want to run a couple of checks on my raw data, but then I also want to run some checks after things have already happened within the pipeline. Uh, so now if I go back to my DAG code, um, you can see in this example that I've implemented these checks as tasks in my DAG. Um, so again, I'm using the great expectations operator out of that provider package. 
And when I use that, I simply define kind of where my data is living. Um, so that's with the path and the data source. Um, and then also point the operator to the expectation suite that I want to run against that data. Um, so that's the expectation suite name. Uh, so again, super simple to set this up. You have to you know, sort of get all of the infrastructure together into your Airflow project. But in terms of writing your DAG, uh, it's just a couple of operators with some pretty basic input parameters. Um, so now if I run this DAG with dependencies, um, as they're currently defined, if any of the data doesn't meet any of the expectations in those checks, uh, my pipeline will be stopped and I'll be notified. So what the final DAG looks like is uh, this. So you can still see I have those split train predict and report tasks um, that we looked at earlier. Uh, but I also now have these other great expectations checkpoints. So again, graphically, um, those are going to be sort of gatekeepers uh, where they're going to make sure the data looks like it should before they're moving on to later steps in the pipeline. Um, and so what happens if one of these expectations isn't met? Uh, say my incoming data set had some nulls in the species column, and I said that that wasn't allowed. Uh, in that particular case, the grid expectations operator is going to recognize that that expectation isn't met, and it's going to throw an error. So you can see that here in the airflow logs that I've pulled from this task instance uh, through an airflow exception, validation with grid expectations failed. And that failure in the expectation has propagated to a failure in my Airflow task. So based on the way that I've set up dependencies in this DAG, that failure is going to stop any downstream tasks from running, uh, effectively ensuring that that data quality issue doesn't ever propagate to this reporting step. Um, so you can see that highlighted kind of in this graph view here where this first uh, task failed and all of the other sub subsequent tasks um, were skipped. So now I have a machine learning model that's modularized, uh, can be run automatically on a schedule, includes data quality checks to ensure that I'm only running my model on good data, and gives me access to all of Airflow's notification functionality, um, dependencies, things like that, so that I know when something goes wrong and I have full control over how this pipeline behaves kind of no matter what my data throws at me. Um, these are all huge steps forward in productionizing a model beyond just working with code in a notebook somewhere. And hopefully this example highlighted that it was pretty easy to set that up. Um, not a lot of work required on your part because of the great um, con contributions from the open source community. So I'll end by saying that this is obviously a super simple example implementation of productionizing a pipeline with some great open source tools. But again, hopefully it gives you a sense of what's possible and again, really pretty easy in Airflow uh, and can provide a jumping off point to implement more advanced use cases. So thanks to everybody for joining in. <laughs>